it's another day and another book, a little a book about magic, a book about a grandma's magic, considering I am a grandma and I do a little magic myself. Um, Calvin and Rome and Neela and Kaya and Easton and Raylan and Vivian and Nona and Cassis and Blue and Cade and Winter and Dominic and my gosh, the list just gets longer and longer. Uh, find a comfortable place to relax and listen to this story and let's let our imaginations go wild. Strega Nona's Magic Lessons, Story and Pictures by Tommy De Paola. From the Kelly Gross Library. Mm, I know who that. Arlie and Julian. Strega Nona's Magic Lessons, Story and Pictures by Tommy De Paola. For Barbara Lucas, who taught me some magic lessons of her own. T de P. Bumbalona, the baker's daughter, was angry. Every day, summer, fall, winter, and spring. She had to get up before the sun to bake the bread. Then piling the loaves on her head, she went to deliver them, but her work wasn't finished. Rushing back to the bakery, she had to mix the flour and salt and water and yeast and set the dough to rise for tomorrow's bread. She does not look happy. Look at how she's carrying it on her head. Don't forget, her father, the baker would say, to make the cookies and bake the cakes. And remember, Bombolona, to clean up everything, spick and span. I'm going now to see my friends. And off he would go to sit all day in the square of the little town in Calabria. One day, Bambalona said, Papa, there is too much work to do. I need some help. Get up earlier, her father said. But I get up now before the sun, said Bambalona, and I'm the last one in town to get to bed. That's the way things are, her father said, as he went out the door on his way to the square. And don't forget, he called back, you have a wedding cake to bake. My goodness, that did it. Bambalona dusted the flour from her fans and hands and took off her apron. I'm going to change the way things are, she said. I'm going to see Streganona. She's so wise, she'll help me. I think I know how to help you, Streganona said after hearing Bambalona's tale, sad tale. So many people come to me with their troubles. I could certainly use some help. Why not stay with me and I will teach you my magic? <gasps> Streganona said Bambalona. Thank you. We'll start today, said Streganona. Now, Big Anthony, who worked around the house and in the garden for Streganona, was listening. He was always listening to what other people were talking about instead of working. Streganona, he shouted, running into the house. Me too. Teach me your magic too. <laughs> oh, Anthony, Streganona said with a smile, I can't do that. Why don't you go and milk the goat? Now Big Anthony was the one who was angry. I'll show Streganona, he muttered. I'll just go and, and work for the baker now that Bumbalona has left. Down the hill, Big Anthony ran. The baker hired him on the spot. The first thing you do is mix the dough, the baker, the baker told Big Anthony. Put in this much flour, this much salt, this much water, and this much yeast. He looked hard at Big Anthony's smiling face. Do you understand? The yeast makes the dough rise. Now mix it right away, and by the time I get back at six o'clock, the dough will be ready to make into loaves. Si, sí, senor. Yes, sir, said Anthony. Anthony, Big Anthony said. <laughs> the baker walked out the door and towards the square. I'll just look at everything first, said Big Anthony, poking around. Cookies. Mm, he ate one and then another. Cakes. He ate one and then another. Big Anthony ate them all. In fact, he was still eating when the clock in the square struck four. Mamma mia, said Big Anthony. I forgot to mix the dough. It won't rise in time. <gasps> I know, the yeast makes the dough rise. I'll just put it in a lot more of that and the dough will rise much faster. I'll still have time for a nap, he said. When he got through, he sat down promptly fell asleep. <laughs> what a sight the baker saw when he returned. Ouch, shouted the baker. What's the matter, Big Anthony, asked Senor Rosa. The baker threw me out. Now I have no job, he answered. And it's Stregonona's fault. I never would have left her house if she had let me learn to be a strega. Silly goose, said Senora Rosa. Who ever heard of a man being a strega? All of a sudden, Big Anthony's eyes lit off, lit up, and off he ran. 
To cure a headache, you must first fill the bowl with water, Strega Nona was telling Bambalona. Next, you add a few drops of olive oil, and then you say these magic words. Knock, knock, knock. Strega Nona went to the door. Oh, Strega Nona, said a tall girl standing there. All my life I've wanted to learn your magic. Will you teach me, please? Santo cielo, dear me, said Strega Nona. What is your name, my girl? Uh, uh, Antonia, said the girl. Why do you want to learn my magic, Antonia? Strega Nona asked. Oh, so that I can help people, said Antonia. Ever since I was a little girl, I've wanted to become a strega. Ah, in that case, said Strega Nona, come right in. This is Bambalona. She is learning my magic, too. Bambalona stared at Antonia and then at Strega Nona. How nice, two girls to teach, Strega Nona said. She smiled at Bambalona and then she began. To learn magic and practice it well, she said, you must learn to see and not to see. You must learn to remember and to forget, to be still and to be busy. But mostly you must be faithful to your work. Do you understand, my dears? See, si, yes, Dreganona, said Bambalona. No, no, said Antonia. When are we going to learn about how to do magic things? In time, said Dreganona. Now let's practice some of the magic words. Repeat in the right order after me. Soon Bambalona said, had all of them, said all of them by heart. Antonia kept mixing them up. Bambalona learned the cure for headaches. Antonia didn't. Bambalona learned to make love potions. Antonia didn't. Bambalona learned how to get rid of warts. Antonia didn't. Bambalona, said Stregagnona, I think you are ready to now to learn more powerful magic. This is a special book. It is very ancient and it contains many magic secrets. Tomorrow we will begin with it. Oh, grazie, Stregagnona, said Bambalona. Me too, Streganona, asked Antonia. Not yet, Antonia, said Streganona. You have other things to learn. That night, while everyone slept, Antonia crept into Streganona's house. Bambalona thinks she's so smart, said Antonia. I'll just read that book tonight, and tomorrow I'll surprise her and Streganona. The next morning, Antonia was looking very tired. Antonia, said Streganona, watch and listen. Come, Bambalona, we will start. Wait, wait, shouted Antonia. I have a surprise. I know some real magic. Watch me turn that iron kettle into a golden one. Are you sure, Antonia, said Strega Nona, frowning. Yes, oh yes, said Antonia, beginning to mutter some strange sounding words, but she stopped. Wait, I remember again, she, I remember now she began again. Be careful, Antonia, warned Bambalona. Magic can't be fooled with I've got it now, Antonia said. She muttered more words, and suddenly there was a bright flash, something, some smelly smoke, and the iron kettle was still there. But Streganona wasn't. Instead, where Streganona had been standing was a nice fat toad. <gasps> now see what you've done, cried Bambalona. Oh no, shouted Antonia. Oh help, help, somebody save Streganona. What have I done? Strega Nona warned you to be careful with magic. Now she's gone forever, Bambalona said. Strega Nona, wept Antonia, picking up the toad. Forgive me, forgive me, please, Bambalona. You're so clever, you're so smart. Please change your back again. I promise I'll never play with magic again. I can't change that toad into Strega Nona, said Bambalona, but I can change Antonia into Big Anthony. Bambalona pulled off Antonia's scarf, and sure enough, there was Big Anthony. Oh, I'll never learn, howled Big Anthony. I'll never learn. Oh, Strega Nona, Strega Nona, what have I done to you? Perhaps, said Bumbalona, if you really promise to never, ever play with magic again, that will bring Strega Nona back. Do you really think that would work, said Big Anthony, sobbing. It's worth a try, said Bumbalona. Big Anthony put down the toad. He closed his eyes tight and put his hand over his heart. I promise, I really promise, as long as I live, I will never play again with magic. I will never play with magic again. Just please bring Strega Nona back. There was another bright flash, some smelly smoke, and presto, Strega Nona was back. Where am I, said Strega Nona. Oh, I, I'm in my little house. Whatever happened to me? Hello, Bambalona. And why, Big Anthony, what are you doing here? Where's sweet Antonia? 
Tell her, Big Anthony, said Bumbalona. Oh, Streganona, said Big Anthony, falling onto his knees. He told Streganona what he had done. He was so busy crying and talking, he didn't see the nice fat toad hopping past him out the door. <laughs> and so, Streganona, please, he said. If you take me back, I promise to be good. I'll do all my chores and never play with magic again. All right, Anthony, said Streganona, smiling. But before you go back to work, change your clothes. You're wearing Signora Rosa's nicest dress. <laughs> Strega Nona. Her magic lessons. That's the tape from, I wanted them to see the whole book. I hope you enjoyed that book. A little bit of magic, a little bit of not magic, a little bit of trickery. A lot of bread. Yum. I will see you next time. Mwah. Love you.